We find ourselves at Audi Camp in Maun, which is where you often spend either the first or last night of your trip if you start here in Maun. It's a beautiful little campsite with lots of facilities, a very vibey bar and very pleasant restaurant filled with lovely staff who are very friendly, generous and kind. Now, we're going to have a little look around the car, the vehicle, I think car is an understatement for what it is, and show you all the things that Chobi 4x4 will give you should you choose to travel with them. This is not a particularly interesting part of the car. It has the water tanks. It carries about 80 litres of water, two 40-litre tanks, which are crucial if you're going into places where there aren't any water, which is crucial if you're going into places where there isn't any water, such as Tree Island around the Mahadi Khadi. A lot of the campsites do have water, but some don't, so that's crucial. And three enormous ammo cases for bits and pieces. This contained my wife's uh, boutique boutique yes a boutique middle one's got a few tools and things and the other one had pots and pans oh and there's a light you can have it white or dun, 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 you can have it yellow yellow seems to attract fewer bugs which when you're on the banks of the Chobe river is extremely important this is for a very small person to climb up. So if, for example, you have a very small child who is staying with you in your tent, well then they can use that as the ladder. Even Kirsten and I, who are not very big people, were too big for that particular ladder. Now, in here we have access to the fridge, if you happen to have a little stopover. Uh, the only disadvantage of this particular hole is that, well, again, as I was saying, Kirsten and I, not very big people, and getting into the fridge At this height not easy. We'll show you how it can be made easy. Crucially, two fuel tanks, both carrying 90 litres of petroleum or gasoline, and that gives you a range of around about a thousand kilometres, well depending on how fast you're driving on the open road, with another three fuel tanks on top which we'll show you up top here are these rather fancy plastic gasoline holders 20 liters each easy to handle easy to pour they've got their own internal funnels and i know i'm making a big thing about where we're storing the extra fuel but it is quite important because if you have a jerry can with no decent kind of a funnel it can be almost impossible to put fuel in so these are great now the back Two enormous heavy-duty spare tyres. Luckily, we haven't needed either of these, but I su suspect very useful. <laughs> I suspect very useful should you get a puncture. We didn't get any punctures, thankfully. Then, a rather elaborate system of getting them off the car. And a really good gym routine during the day, if you're needing to build your muscles while on a 4x4 safari, opening and closing these wheels <coughs> is a good way to do it. So this is the V6 Toyota Land Cruiser four-wheel drive. It's a petrol engine and that is as far as my mechanical knowledge goes. Now, it's lots of space in here. There's oodles of room to put whatever it is that you need. Most of these packing cases when you arrive are empty, but for one actually, which has a bit of recovery gear and some tools. But the rest are all empty to put clothes and food and whatever else you want to store. This, click, and then you pull. Slides easily out. And now, if you're a shorty like Kirsten and I, you can access the fridge. Now the fridge is a very crucial part of camping unless you're prepared to survive on a diet of canned pilchards, tuna and chickpeas or baked beans. These days one doesn't have to.
Now the first time we used one of these, we bought a whole lot of fresh vegetables and things that all went rotten uh, because, well, it is a very good freezer and very good fridge, but you need to be careful about what is sustainable over the long term. There are two compartments for the freezer. This I learned yesterday, 13 days after we departed Maun, having complained bitterly about the lack of freezer space. There is plenty of freezer space. And then there are three little baskets for putting your fridge stuff in. Now, a very crucial part of the travel experience, the kitchen. This is a magnificently appointed kitchen. It has got a little gas cooker. It has got some heat resistant gloves. I actually think they're welding gloves. I didn't find cause to weld anything, which is lucky because I don't know how to weld anything. I did have cause to use them to handle hot kitchen implements, however. All the glassware you could need in the form of sort of tin or stainless steelware, I suppose. A lighter, two teaspoons, plates, uh, bowls. If you have guests, you can even give your guests tea and coffee. This magnificent little kettle which fits perfectly onto the gas cooker and whistles loudly when the water is boiled. My personal highlight was this. Very thoughtfully provided espresso maker. I made great coffee every morning and unfortunately you do need to be a little bit careful about how high you let the flame go. Basic first aid kit with bandages, plasters, antiseptics, antihistamines and burn protection should you find yourself in a fire or unable to use the welding gloves. This particular black, what shall we say, package of cutlery is dangerous. It's dangerous because everything in it is so sharp that it could easily be used in a weaponized form. So please take care when you open up your front runner cutlery set. Uh, you could do yourself an injury or indeed a member of your family could be injured. So be careful when you open it up. Very efficient, everything you need, very sharp. Another ladder for a small child or perhaps uh, a monkey. Monkeys did get in once or twice. Then, in this compartment, our chairs. Now, these things are very neatly put together. I must confess to you, however, that it took me a good half an hour to figure out how they work. Now, I find it pretty easy. I mean, that looked pretty simple, didn't it? Well, it took me about 30 minutes to figure it out the first time round. Now I'm an expert. Very comfortable and very small when folded away. I will now fold it away in an expert fashion. Better than I expected. Everything's got its little place in here. Everything is neat. Everything has got a little strap to tie it down in case you go over some rocky roads and that sort of thing. And then I just wanted to quickly show you there's a vast selection of kitchenware, graters, pots, pans, saucepans, colander, all of which are easily accessible from this window. And here is the stainless steel table. Also very easy to set up. Also quite good for Jim, if you happen to be setting it up the first time. There it is. Et voila. To access the boudoir, we have this ladder, which folds out or folds down into something about that size and slips neatly into the back. End of an evening when you arrive late at your camp or you've been out on game drive and want to have a rest quickly afterwards, the entire edifice takes about two minutes to set up, which is fantastic. Plenty long enough for people even taller than I, uh, quite a lot taller than I in fact, 
lots of little spaces to put whatever you like inside here your bed clothes perhaps your dressing gown if it's a small one your book as uh, Kirsten and I put our books in there for the course of the trip and there's also an overhead light which is great and just lots of space and lots of air but all the windows close up uh, we left them open but for the mosquito nets and they've got very fine mesh mosquito nets which is fantastic when you're traveling around a place like this in the wet season very few bugs or insects managed to get inside while we were inside so that is the tour of our Chobe 4x4 Land Cruiser Extraordinaire. It's been an utterly magnificent trip and we hope to do it again with them sometime soon.